The Empire's Death Star Mark II was intended to bring total control over the galaxy. However, due to unforeseen circumstances, it ended up being largely responsible for the Empire's total demise. But what were the Empire's plans for the Death Star and the rest of the galaxy as a whole following the Battle of Endor? Now, remember, Sidious actually used the second Death Star as a trap for his enemies. He intended for the Rebel fleet to become trapped between the full-functioning shielded battle station and the rest of the Imperial fleet, bringing all his enemies into one place so that they could be swiftly destroyed. He also expected to turn Luke Skywalker, the son of his apprentice Darth Vader, to the dark side and claim the position as his new apprentice. Now, as we know, this didn't happen. But what if it did? We're going to say Sidious manages to turn Luke, who kills Vader and pledges fealty to Sidious. Meanwhile, the ground team on Endor are executed, leading to the shields remaining up, and the majority of the Rebels fleet is wiped out as a result. So where's Sidious going to go from here? Well, Sidious' first move is going to be to ensure that all remaining Rebel operatives and sympathisers were put down. For this reason, we know that he planned for a fleet to be assembled, larger than any seen in centuries. And he was going to send these fleets to two specific worlds, Mon Cala and Chandrilla. These fleets would then blockade these worlds until the Death Star Mark II's completion, where it would be dispatched to completely destroy both planets. Now, he needed the Death Star Mark II to be complete before moving it away from Endor's protective shield. He really couldn't afford to lose the Death Star for a second time. Now, the reason these two planets were selected is because they have a heavy rebel presence on them. Mon Cala's rebellion had greatly supplied the Alliance with troops and capital ships, and runaway slaves had also become a great problem. Not to mention, resistance movements had also emerged at the start of the Galactic Civil War. So, Mon Cala was quickly becoming a problem for the Empire. Meanwhile, Chandrilla was the homeworld to rebel leader Mon Mothma, and it was infamous for rebel hideouts. It was rumoured to have countless safe houses on the world, and Sidious knew that as soon as the rebels' main military and navy assets were destroyed, these safe houses would be stocked full of rebels, awaiting further orders. It's also said that Sidious had plans to destroy Endor as well following the completion of the Death Star. And this is actually kind of a valid idea. After all, the Ewoks had allied themselves with the Rebellion. Not only this, but since countless rebels would have been killed here, it risked becoming a martyr site where sympathizers would come to pay tribute, etc. And remember the rebels that gave their lives fighting the Empire. For this reason, it made far more sense to send a clear message, to have the sight of the Rebels' final defeat a desolate field filled with chunks of Endor, to remind people what happens when you turn on the Empire. It's also very likely that other worlds would feel the sting of the Empire's new superweapon, for example Ryloth, which was previously involved in a scheme to assassinate the Emperor. And although firmly now under Imperial control, it would serve as a severe lesson to the rest of the galaxy. Now, from here, Sidious is going to begin training his new apprentice, Luke Skywalker. Luke is also a very valuable asset due to his ties with the Rebellion. He'd be able to infiltrate and find the remaining holdouts and wipe them out. Basically, following this, the Rebellion is all but completely wiped out. And all the worlds that even began to murmur of their discontent with the Empire would likely face the wrath of the new Superstation. And that's going to mean that people would turn on people who didn't like the Empire for their own safety, because they knew the risk. So, if your neighbour's talking about how much they hate the Empire, you'd go and report them to Imperial security. Because if they did anything, for example, killed some Imperial agents or stormtroopers, then they risk the planet being named an enemy of the Empire, and possible complete annihilation. Sidious would rebuild his Imperial High Command and continue to expand his military further, spreading further and further out throughout the galaxy, searching for new lands to conquer and enemies to defeat. Meanwhile, Sidious would continue his Sith research, becoming more and more powerful than ever before. Realistically, in this peace period, with Sidious having complete control, he would be more or less a god. He'd have an incredibly increased lifespan, the ability to destroy worlds at his whim. Not only this, but his connection to the Force would be greater than ever, so who knows what secrets he'd unlock. You could potentially be looking at the Empire surviving a millennia, assuming it didn't collapse upon itself, that is. 
which is a very real possibility. But what do you think of Sidious's plans after Endor? And how powerful do you think he could actually become following his total victory? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like, share, and sub if you did enjoy it. It's really appreciated and it helps the channel grow. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at the Law Guy and tick the bell for regular updates. Thanks again for watching. I do hope that you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.